Sunday, and welcome to the Little Brown Church. I hope you've had time to prepare your elements for communion so we can partake together later. Let us begin in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this time where we can come together once again to celebrate the life, the love, and the message of your Son, Jesus Christ. We begin with the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's first reading is Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In all this I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, for he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes the wind will rain 
Together, let us go to prayer. Loving God, we come to you once again on our knees with gratitude in our hearts for the many gifts that you have provided for us and that you will provide for us. We thank you for the chance to continue worshiping, even though it's online. We are lifting you up together as a church community. And we thank you for that opportunity to continue doing that, even during this very difficult time. We pray for each of the concerns that are being mentioned now in the comments below. We pray for the concerns that have been given to our elders and the concerns that those of us who have gathered to present this worship service today have shared with one another. Just in this room, we have been talking about the cancer that has affected so many loved ones and those close to us. We have been talking about deaths that have taken place in families, multiple deaths, some related to COVID, some related to other ailments. We want to be remembering those families as they deal with the loss of loved ones. Be with those who are suffering from cancer, from other disease, and from this horrible virus we are experiencing at this time. We want to lift up all of those who are feeling anxious and afraid at this time because the future is unknown. Be with each of us as we move through this uncertainty. Bring a peace to our hearts. Bring a peace to our souls. Be with our church community as we struggle with being apart from one another. Keep us united. Keep us as one. Remembering that you are at our center. And it is your son, Jesus Christ, who keeps us moving on. We thank you for him, for each of the aspects of our lives that he touches. And it is in his holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I heard a comment recently, and it was from another elder, and it really stuck with me. And that was followed by a written tribute by another elder on the same subject. And the subject of these communications was... We should thank and remember all those who are working so hard behind the scenes to keep this church operating during this unprecedented time. And some of you may have felt that your works go unnoticed or unappreciated. And that is definitely not the case. We do notice, we do greatly appreciate all the work you do and all the sacrifice you give in keeping this church operating. That just means that we need to do a better job of letting you know that, both the church and the congregation. And speaking of the congregation, although we have a couple of campuses, we have a wonderfully talented minister, we have talented musicians, we have all kinds of talented people behind the scenes that I said keeps the church operating. Without a congregation, there would really be no church. So I just wanted to thank the entire congregation for remaining active, remaining involved, remaining committed through this very difficult time for the church. And so whether you attend the online services, whether you take in the uh, online Bible study on Wednesdays, whether you call somebody else and talk to them and help them through a rough time, through all of these ways that you are remaining committed to the church, we really appreciate it. And finally, I'd also like to thank you all for your financial gifts. Without those gifts, the church wouldn't get very far. The church couldn't continue to spread God's message and help make the world a better place. And so you can donate in three different ways. The first is to provide your gift in the offering box right back here in the front doors of Little Brown Church. You can also mail a check to Church of the Valley, or you can also contribute online at cobtoday.org via PayPal. Thank you. I hope you've had time to ready your elements for communion. When they were all together in one place, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he said, This is my body. Take, eat, each of you. Let us take the bread together.
Then he took the cup and said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us take the cup together. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the love that this table represents. And we thank you for our opportunity to come to it each week. It's in your son's loving name that we pray. Amen. The gospel reading today is from Matthew. It's Matthew 13, verses 31 and 32. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. But when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and make nests in its branches. Amen. If you use Apple products, you know, iPhones or uh, com computers and things like that, um, often the clock application will tell you what time it is in Cupertino, California. And as many of you know, the reason for that is that Apple, which is today one of the richest companies in the world, began in a small garage in Cupertino, California. In 1976, Steve Wozniak built the first Apple computer. And then he partnered with Steve Jobs and Ronald Wayne, and they started this company in Steve Jobs' parents' garage. One of their first orders was just a small order of 50 computers at $500 a piece. But today, the company is worth almost $2 trillion. Apple wasn't the only company to begin in a garage. There were many others. Uh, Amazon was established in a garage in Bellevue, Washington. In 1995, Amazon.com was launched, only selling books. Do you remember that, when they only sold books? I did. Two years later, the company went public, and now it's the world's largest online retailer. Google was established in the 1990s in a garage in Menlo Park with only eight employees. And in 1945, Harold Matson and Ruth and Elliot Handler were making picture frames in a garage in Southern California. And from the scraps of wood and lucite, Elliot began making dollhouse furniture. Well, the dollhouse furniture became a business for them. And Ruth and Elliot expanded the business to include other toys and called the company Mattel. And finally, in 1923, in a one-car garage in Southern California, a company was formed that was originally called the Disney Brothers Studio. But shortly after that, they signed a deal with Universal Pictures and eventually became the Walt Disney Company. Each of these organizations began as something very small and grew into something big and mighty. Today's scripture is a parable, and it's probably one of the most well-known of the parables. The parable of the mustard seed speaks of something small, the smallest of all seeds, that grows into a tree, big and mighty. And Christ uses this illustration as a metaphor to describe the kingdom of heaven. Now, when he uses the phrase kingdom of heaven here, he's not speaking specifically and solely to heaven, but rather he's using the phrase interchangeably with the kingdom of God. Many times when we read this parable, we think of it as one that teaches about the growing of the church or the expanse of the kingdom of God. And that is an important element to this parable. We're reminded how the message that Christ brought with him was carried by just this one man, and then later by a small group, and then a larger group, and then even more carried the message, until the kingdom of God was immense, like a giant tree, where we, like the birds of the air, can go to rest. But although we, mo we most commonly think about this parable as one of a seed that grows into a tree, I think we can also get much from this parable if we flip it on its head. When we do that, when we view this parable first focusing on the tree and all of its greatness, we're reminded that when we see things of greatness, when we see things that are so impressive, there's a pretty good chance that they came from something very, very small. That's what I like about parables. Parables were a way that Christ taught not so that not only so that people could better understand his message, but parables also allowed for the hearer to interpret the story in a way to match their current situation. So when we hear a parable today, it can inspire us, even in, in our own modern age, even in our own modern lives. 
For me, this parable is also a parable of hope. The tree is how we envision our situation, our world, our goals. The tree is our hope, even if our beginnings or our current situation is a mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God can remind us that of the, of the greatness that can be achieved when the message is truth, when the work is for goodness, and when the goal is to better. This is a message that we continue to see played out on our streets and on our television screens. Those of us who are demonstrating and those of us who are working for justice in other ways, we are working towards the tree. Those of us who long for equity envision the tree because the tree is a place where we all can dwell, where we all can nest, where we all can rest. The tree is safe. The tree is welcoming. The tree is the kingdom of God the way that God envisioned the kingdom of God. And as people of faith, we can turn to this parable for inspiration for our work. We can turn to this story as a reminder that the outreach that we do and the ministries, the ministries that we provide are done with the kingdom of God as our focus. We're reminded that even the smallest act done in the name of Jesus Christ, even a seemingly insignificant deed done for the glory of God, is a gateway to the kingdom of God. It is a branch of the mighty tree. To date, we have given over 2,500 pairs of socks to the people of Hope of the Valley Rescue Mission. What a wonderful ministry. But I remember the first day we began collecting the socks. I remember when the first pair was thrown into one of those collection baskets. That first pair of socks, they were the mustard seed. The 25 pairs of warm feet and counting, that is the tree. A couple of weeks ago, after being closed for four months, our food pantry reopened over at Church of the Valley. It's being oper operated very differently for a while taking lots of precautions to make sure everyone is healthy. Our food pantry serves 1,200 to 1,400 individuals each month. But of course, right now, until the word gets out that we've reopened, fewer people are utilizing it. It's run out of the parlor of our church, and it has, has become such a large operation that it takes many volunteers to run it. The food is stored not only in a large pantry, but perishables are kept in industrial industrial refrigerators, and frozen products in large freezers. In addition to receiving donations from our church family, weekly loads of food are received from Target and from Food for Less and for, from the Los Angeles Regional Food Bank. Today, the food pantry is a tree. But the pantry wasn't always like this. 25 or 30 years ago, Katie McFadden began making sack lunches and handing them through the gates of Church of the Valley to anyone who was in need, while Daryl and Joyce Fetty maintained supplies in a small storage room that consisted of food donated primarily and exclusively by church members. That's how the food pantry began. That was its mustard seed. When our Tijuana home build began, a small group of people from our church went to Tijuana to build a single home. Today, we now partner with other churches and with Project Mercy, and we make two trips a year to build multiple homes. Today, I wanted to talk about doing outreach, about doing ministry, because I know for some of us, it feels like our current situation has less left us unable to do outreach, to do the outreach that we feel that we've been called to do. Sure, we can worship online, but what about the other part of our church? What about ministry? But we need to remember, whatever situation we're in, we can continue to do ministry, even if it's mustard seed ministry. Because mustard seed ministry has a focus on the tree. There are many opportunities that we have to minister, even during our current situation. We can even volunteer online. There's an online organization called My Grief Angels, where volunteers chat with people who are mourning a loss or suffering from anxiety or, and just want to have some human connection. And you don't have to have any special training to do this. We can volunteer for Operation Gratitude and write thank you letters to deployed troops and 
first responders and medical personnel. Those of you who can sew can make face masks and donate them. Or we can come up with our own ideas, not just for ministries during this time, but also for those that will continue to grow stronger and mightier after we're able to come back together again. I encourage us all to stay focused on the tree. Plant our mustard seeds, but stay focused on the tree. You know, we have a chance every time we leave our homes to add to this tree, even now. With all of us wearing masks, we can't really even smile at one another right now, at least not with our faces. But we can smile with our deeds. We can smile with our actions. And we can smile with our hearts. Especially now, let's be kind to one another. When we are out and about, let's say please. Let's say thank you. Let's ask others how they're doing. So many of us are anxious and, and stressed. The, the smallest act of kindness can literally turn someone's day around. And that is ministry. That is outreach. So as we move forward, let us do so with our hands full of mustard seeds, dropping them along our path and watching them transform into the mightiest of trees. Let's pray. Holy God, guide us to where you would have us do your work. Allow us to tend to your tree, keeping it mighty and strong, so that all may dwell within it. It's in your Son's holy name we pray. Amen. This world can be cold and bitter Feels like we're in the dead of winter Waiting on something better But am I really gonna hide forever Over and over again I hear your voice in my head Let your light shine, let your light shine For all to see Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow so there's no doubt or denying Let it burn so brightly That everyone around can see That it's you, that it's you that we need Start a fire in me ooh, ooh. You only need a spark to start a whole blaze it only takes a little faith Let us start right here in this city So these old walls will never be the same Over and over again I hear your voice in my head Need to know, I need to go Spirit, won't you fall on my heart now Start a fire in my soul Fan the flame and make it grow So there's no doubt or denying let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the light of my darkest day. We have the hope, we bear your name, we carry the news that you have come to save. So fan the flames and make it grow. So there's no doubt or denying. Let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the light on the darkest day. Start a fire in me. Ooh, 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 ooh. I am so glad we were able to worship together today. Now, go out, grab a handful of mustard seeds, and start planting. I love you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll see you next time. 
let it burn so brightly that everyone around can see that it's you, that it's you that we need. Start a fire in me. You are the fire, you are the flame, you are the light on the darkest day. Start a fire in me. Ooh, ooh. 